like to all the David, so-called Ike and the, and the Alex Jones types and all these kind of um, ooh, ooh, Illuminati types, you know, who are, you know, a, a, a Illuminati, they have Illuminati phobia. You know, these folks out there who have Illuminati phobia and so forth and so on. How can they even open their mouth against our sovereign, against his majesty, against our Ethiopian system and our way of life? You understand? And even point to anything in Africa or in any even poor Africa. They can't even point at Mugabe, really. You know, they can't even well point at Mugabe. And you have a system this awful and this corrupt that has done what it has done to black people, what it has done to, you know, we say the Shawnee people and, and done to indigenous people in America and how it's exterminated, you know, even what they did to their own so-called white Jewish people. It was a Nazi thing. And they have the audacity, how they have polluted and destroyed the earth. They have the audacity to even talk. I think that some of these folks who who are so called so anti Illuminati like the David Icke and the rest of them, somehow I think that they either either they're playing their role, you understand, or they are really kinda of like those frustrated types, you know, like those who talk about Bush. They wish that they had a father like like Bush's father and had a father like Harriman, you know what I mean? And they were actually born into it. So they're talking out of, you know how a lot of people talk like out of jealousy. The same way they're talking about against his imperial majesty and against his, his roots, which is our roots. They're trying to tell us that these roots don't exist. In other words, black people, what happened to y'all was good for y'all and, and it was destined to happen and... Okay, now that you're a little conscious about it, we're sorry about it, but let's forget about that. Let bygones be bygones. It's all in the past. It's all over. It's all done with. But that's not the, you know, that's not, that's not reality. Uh -uh. So most of these folks, it's, a, it's, it's amazing that they even have the audacity to even open their mouth. You know what I mean? And we're living in the madness that was created by people like them. You know, like they are going to tell us his majesty is, is, oh, he's Illuminati. He's down with the British monarchy. Look, he's wearing a crown. Look, he's a king. When your British thing is the counterfeit. Your European thing is the counterfeit. Your system is the counterfeit. Your Christ is the counterfeit. You know, because here's what's so interesting. It says that the Antichrist will go before the Christ. This is what I find to be very interesting. It says that the Antichrist will actually go before the Christ. So the Antichrist must first, in that sense, must first come, must first come forward. And we can see that Antichrist coming forward in white supremacy. The white supremacy Christ, all that they taught us about Jesus, Christ, and the Bible, and then we see their works. We see their deeds. They want to talk about in the time of his imperial majesty, there were poor people, there were people begging. And today in the richest country in the world, people don't even have health care. People are getting evicted from their homes. People have lost their life insurance and, and everything that they have worked and earned because somebody was gambling with their money or somebody just just squandered on some bet. Well, what, whatever nonsense they did, people losing their money right here in America. Oh, because America allows you to occupy Wall Street for a couple of days. See how quickly they, they took those people out of that position. So these people don't have a right except in the mercy of the Almighty, that the Almighty allows them to even speak and, and, and open their mouth, to open their mouth. How dear them. You understand? It's like what Psalms 2 says. You know, why do the, you know, nations what rage? 
the heathen raised and the nations imagined. And the people, and the people, why do the heathens, yeah, I'm saying nation because the Bamarinya Ahaza, Ahaza Lenya, Guadalajara, Malu, Ogonotis, Lenin, Kantuli, Nagaralu. So I'm translating from them hard in that sense too, but you're right. It says, why do the heathen, why do the Goyim, why do the Goys and Gals, why do they um, rage and the people imagine a vain thing? They imagine vanity against his imperial majesty. And it's asking that question not like there's a logical answer. It's not like saying, well, the reason why we, we say this or why we do this. It's like on this David Icke page, just, just, just to, to recap on this David Icke page where the sister, what was it, Moika? Was it Moika right here? Um, had said um, Moika had... Uh, Ask the question right here. This is a good, this is a good, um, a good, a good short. She says she was going to keep it short, make it short. Wondering what information can people give me to why Hala Selassie I is never mentioned when it comes to the Queen, Saxon, Coburg, and JFK. Well, we're probably one of the few or the first to actually make that connection, even to make that con with JFK, that His Majesty Haile Selassie was the first black man as a sovereign, as a, as a, as a world leader, a sovereign, a king, a black man to spend overnight in the White House as a guest and not as a nigger not as a so-called slave. And 50 days afterward, after that visit with Kennedy, would JFK be assassinated? Would JFK be killed? Now, you really have to connect what occurred with um, Eisenhower, too. You understand what Eisenhower said, that, that even though Eisenhower was well-educated in a white Western country, that his majesty told, taught him things that he should have known already, and the final thing that he said on his, on, on, on his exit, you understand, from office was beware of the military-industrial complex. Now, as far as the queen, the queen, the Saxa, the Coburg, is because most of these Alex Jones types and many of these these uh, David Icke types, and even some of the Bill Cooper types. You know, Bill Cooper is someone that, you know, his story is a touching story, so forth and so on. But he was a CIA man. He was down with it. He probably was involved in a lot of a lot of hit jobs and assassinations and and other other crimes against humanity. Yes, in the latter part of his life, he did. You know, he did come out and 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 um you know, he did come out and, 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 and speak against, you know, a lot of this and expose a lot of things going on. But, you know, let's not try to treat him like he was some saint and, and you know, he was always in this saintly line of work. He was doing some most likely despicable things before he was woken up. But this is what it all comes down to to answer that Sister Moika's question. What it all comes down to is a clash of currencies. It's a clash of systems. You see, so the, one of the reasons why they don't want to go into it is because they don't, I, I, I suspect that the Ikes and the Joneses out there are compromised. You understand? They have they have a free way to say what they're going to say, but they are part of keeping people in this kind of spin job. I mean, they're, they're revealing some things, but I've been listening to a lot of Ike and Jones stuff, and I'm almost already tired of listening to it because it's not really, it's not really showing us anything new. It's kind of just, it's almost like watching, even when you watch the news, they tell you what's going on, and it's almost like that. It's regurgitating a lot of stuff already and there doesn't seem to be any logical or real solution to the matter you know coming from that there's no real solution to it it's i think it's a lot of it is staged you know a lot of it is staged i really don't see anything that they're really saying that's really 
beneficial that's breaking the paradigm, but it actually keeps people more in the paradigm. But one of the reasons why is if you, what you do, what you need to do is to look up J.A. Rogers, Nature Knows No Color Line, and some of the other J.A. Rogers books and, 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 and works. Because what you'll find out is there's such a thing called the, the black um, nobility and the black British and the black monarchy is, is the black presence in Europe. And we can see some of this in some of the shields, even the Pope. This present pope, he has a shield that has some nigger heads on it, you know, some black heads on it, Moorish, some call it Moorish heads, so forth and so on, um, that have Negro or black people's heads on them, you know, as symbols, as icons. And that's also the connection with the, the order known as the Knights of the Garter, and the whole idea of the Knights refers to that, um, knight in shining armor or black men that wore, wore the robes of righteousness, the white robes. That's what that shining armor. You ever see some of the Africans who are like the black, blue, black skin, beautiful African, and when they're wearing the white, the white clean garments, how it has that contrast, it brings out that... I mean, I mean, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a dramatic picture, but that's the idea. It's almost like angels in a sense. It's like knights in shining armor. And that's where we get the idea of knights in shining armor before the European. Now, because of his cowardice and, 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 and the demonic interposition, what you see is more armament, more medals more kind of a need to protect himself, hurt the other person a lot, but you be well, well protected. So this is where we get a lot of the clumsy body armor that comes in the European, the latter tradition of knights. But one of the reasons that most folks just go back to the European, the beginning of the European, and then call it the beginning of everything. And so with us speaking about Kedemawi Haile Selassie, with us speaking about the King of Kings, this comes totally out of out of, out of it, it seems like out of um, what they call left field. That comes out of, it's like out of space. It comes off the world. This is like something that's coming from, from, from another planet. It's like heaven coming down, like New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven for them because it's so out of this world, because it's out of the white European world system of things. So for the sister Moika and others that may ask the same question as she asks, where she says um, she wonders why Haile Selassie I is never mentioned when it comes to the Queen, Saxon, and the Cobra. I suspect that besides just the malicious lies and slanders and rumors, and we can even call it from our perspective, blasphemies, insults, and injuries to dignity. This is what the Bible says, that they will speak evil of, of dignities, you know, because they know not like as natural brute beasts what they don't understand. They will fight against even in the bitterness of their ignorance. You know, like when those folks said that the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth, she is the one She's the reason why she put Hollis Lodge in the throne or he's on the throne because of her. And she wasn't even a, 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 a ruler until the 50s, 20-something years after his majesty was already on the throne. And, and, you know, she was a little, a, little, a little girl. I think she was, a, yeah, I think at least a little girl, or, or maybe she wasn't even born by that time when his majesty ascended to power. But what it is is that they refuse to acknowledge that we have our own ancient system of sovereignty, that we have our own kingship. And it's not even to, to, to compare like, like we're older than you and you. No, but we have our own kingship. It's to dismiss the fact that we have our own indigenous kingship because they are still looking myopically in their white supremacists. They have not been... To put it in Morpheus language, they have not been unplugged, you see, and they have not been unplugged from the matrix or the white supremacist system. 
So if you see a black man here, you understand, and this black man with 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 honor and with dignity is able to associate himself on behalf of truth and righteousness with any world ruler, leader, president, prime minister, king, queen, or whatever like that, in their little little bestial minds, like little beast, they have to think like, oh, he must be he he must be bowing down to them or he must be doing something below his honorable dignity. Because what they're saying to a lot of you blacks and a lot of us out here, the once lost but now found Beta Israel, African Americans, Afro West Indians and Caribbean, what they're saying is all black people must be brought low and treated like inferior niggas. And we cannot acknowledge that our superior has actually come and manifested himself in the flesh. I think it took the Europeans a, a good moment to really recognize what had gone on, that a lot of them still could not recognize what had gone on. And when they finally recovered some of their maybe, um, I would say senses, but when they finally recognize what it is, this is roughly around the time of the revolution, and they took advantage, you understand, they took advantage of the carelessness and the disobedience of certain Ethiopians who, like children, also lacked wisdom. Now, what you're seeing here is, a, is an Ethiopian coronation. I, you know, I, I would love to even, for those who are willing to learn, to even show and prove that we have our own system of coronation that the British never had. In fact, when the Queen of England, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Lizzie or Elizabeth, you know, Beth, Beth, whatever, when she was coronated in the 50s, they had to redesign their coronation ceremony to match what they had seen in Ethiopia of the King of Kings. And a lot of folks don't even know that, that they had to upgrade. This way when you see all the video on TV and everything in the 50s when, when the Queen of England was coronated, so forth and so on, they even tell you in some of the documentary that they actually staged it. They made it like a Hollywood affair. Why? Because they remember the coronation that they had witnessed, and they still were telling stories of what they had witnessed, the, the nobility, the, the regality, the honor of this simple people, you understand, who, who was not all Western and all modernized and advanced as the Europeans thought that they were, but they saw such honor and such a, an involvement of people and monarchy during the coronation of his imperial majesty. So what they had to do for the Queen of England was up the ante. That's basically what they did. And if you look at those documentaries concerning the coronation, you will see that they, they even t said in some of the documentaries we've seen that they never had, they had a coronation, kind of um, a basic coronation um idea, you know, of coronating their, their rulers, but it was nothing of the pomp and the splendor and the ceremony as it became for this particular queen, the Queen of England. Now, here's what's so very interesting. I don't recall this, but I don't think his majesty was at that coronation, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I don't think he attended. I don't think he had to, in that sense, attend. You know, I don't think he did attend. You know what I'm saying? But um, perhaps there was some representative. But just a point about why the British um, coronation for Elizabeth was so um, ceremonial, pompous, so forth and so on, is because they were trying to match and outdo what they saw in Ethiopia in, 19, in 1930. You understand? So we keep seeing, like the in Ayabingi we say, uh, what it says, white boy, I follow Rastafari, I try, white boy, I follow, uh, that white boy, I follow, I and I try, they are follow, I and I, they, they follow what black people do, like when we look at the reason why they have all these obelisks, 
while they're doing all this Egyptian stuff in Rome, in France, in Germany, in 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 in, in London, in in D.C., in in Central Park by the Metropolitan Museum of the Art. Why do they have these obelisks there? Why do they try to emulate and connect them. And even though you see the people have the same complexion that Hala Selassie has right here, reddish brown, they will still assume that it is it is it is, it is leprous as snow. They'll still assume that it's, 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 it's white. They will, they will assume that they are the Egyptians because they are under some sort of a delusion. So brothers and sisters, don't drive yourself crazy and don't make yourself think like you're crazy because you're wondering how come, as the sister says right here, they never mention his majesty when it comes to the, the queen, Saxon, Cobra, and JFK. You know, because they don't want to open up that sort of can of beans or because they're just totally ignorant of it, that they believe the lies that they lie against his imperial majesty, and not just against his majesty, it goes beyond just against his majesty. Because even Ethiopians, I think, should be somewhat offended, even if they're not big fans of Haile Selassie as we as Rastafari. We as Rastafari, he's our Abba. We are like, say, if he's our, like, like the Pope, or more so to us, as our Abba, we are like those of his name, like the Jesuits are for the Pope. We are for Haile Selassie and his kingdom. So they might just be just regular lay people, regular Christians, regular citizens. But still, when they say this sort of thing that our emperor and our kings cannot be coronated unless some far-off European power like Britain, see, they're confusing Ethiopia for India. That's why they say that. They're confusing Ethiopia for India because in medieval times, India was uh, another way of saying Ethiopia because, remember, the original uh, Hindus Kush was Kushites who were black people. This is why Krishna and the so-called gods, ancient gods, were portrayed as being blue-black. They try to say, oh, they have some extraterrestrial. No, they're, they're black. <laughs> they're Ethiopian. <laughs> you know what I mean? If that's extraterrestrial for you, highland, mountains are extra terra, extra terra firma, so maybe that's what they meant by that. But the reason why they made them blue-black because they were black, so dark skin blue, you understand, like Krishna and so forth and so on. But the Indian civilization was established by the Ethiopians. So Britain and the queens, going back to Queen Victoria, um, her ancestor, Elizabeth's ancestor, she was known as the Empress of India. So people perhaps are confusing India for Ethiopia. But don't make no mistake about it. Ethiopia first, Ethiopia Tikda, Yehuda Yikdam. In other words, Ethiopia is first before India. And the Indian civilization was only established because of that Hindus Kush or the Inda Kush, you understand, connection from ancient times. So perhaps that's probably one of the confusions that they're making, like in India when many of the Indian, since, since the British run that country and run that culture, and the people are happy to have it, and we're happy to have it like that among those latter-day um, half-caste, so-called Indian, they were happy to have it that way, that whenever they had a new Raj or Raji or whatever their particular provincial or localized rulers um, were called, they needed to get the British permission. Now, the British thought in their hearts and minds that they could do to Ethiopia, in other words, they could be as successful in establishing their own, their own way in Ethiopia as they were able to do in India. And what his imperial majesty and the, that Ethiopian generation of his time um, showed and proved, no, no, no. You don't love I and I, and I and I know it. No, you cannot do that.
to I and I. And that's, this is one of the reasons why they were unsuccessful even after restoration, you understand? And they tried to wiggle themselves in and put Ethiopia under Britain as a protectorate, so forth and so on. But it's in Pearl Ma they even tried to call Ethiopia Abyssinia because they recognized that they could get a name change on Ethiopia and force the name Abyssinia. So you've seen a lot of the newsreel, though Ethiopia officially in its own documentation and in documentation of other friendly countries, you see them recognize Ethiopia as Ethiopia. But among the Europeans, the British and the rest of them, and Italy also was trying that too, they would call Ethiopia Abyssinia this kind of made-up name that comes out of a whole different part of our story because it's like you Negroes, if you're carrying white man's name, if you're carrying Slave Master's name, you know, um, Slave Master's last name, he owns you. If you're carrying a name that he made up for you and a name that connects with his legacy, then you are his property. This is why they try to change the name of Ethiopia to Abyssinia. And even today, they have some um, hard-hearted and heavily burdened Ethiopians and tribalists who are advocating that Ethiopia is really Abyssinia and, and blah, 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 rare, rare, so forth. And so they, don't, they don't get to see how they're being used in this. In, in this th there's a bigger story than white supremacy. It's the kingdom of the king of kings and his Christ. But Mocha... So just to start with, and, and being honest, I guess we all have a million questions. And I, and I, and I as you mentioned before, to ask I, Ike, David Ike, and Alex Jones, like they're some guru. I mean, they clearly admit that some things they can't answer, and they try to answer everything with the same answer. Illuminati, Illuminati. These people want to run the world, and so forth and so on. But they never give us any real solutions. You see what I'm saying? They never really give us any real solutions. They are like the the celebrity pundits for the New World Order, actually. If you notice that, that's very strange. They never really give us any solutions. And they always say they don't want to do the spiritual thing. And they all will talk about um, uh, Bill Cooper, William Cooper. You understand? The ex-CIA uh, agent who wrote uh, Behold a Pale Horse, and so forth and so on, Right? But yet, Bill Cooper even said that a, a large part of his inspiration to even face what he knew would probably be his death or his murder was his newfound conversion to the the faith of of, of Jesus Christ. In other words, it was it was the spiritual idea that really moved and turned his heart. But most of these guys, like David Icke and Alex Jones, they always say they don't want to go. Go. They're almost like politicians. Politicians of New World Order Illuminati rhetoric. But I never hear about His Majesty. Of course, and and you know what? You probably won't. Maybe now because we say something, they might try to say something. You understand, which would be interesting if they say anything. Yet Alex Jones, he plays a lot of uh, Bob Marley music on his show. Well, of course, of course. You know that there's a whole big, uh, the whole big wrestling over the copyrights and and so forth and so on. And you know, it's like any white person can play it any time, but as soon as a black man plays it to talk a real point a real uncensored, unedited point, they basically block the videos like YouTube has done us and done others already. Also, to go further, before Alex Jones and David Icke, Rastafari already were on to the Illuminati and the New World Order, i.e. Babylon. And not just in the reggae music. People say just the reggae music. You see, because what a lot of the folks don't know that there's an uh, intellectual side, an intelligentsia side to Rastafari. You see, because they're looking for the reggae clothing. You know, they're looking for the outer stuff. They don't even recognize that many of those so-called ball heads, the ones that don't have dreadlocks, you understand? They could be white. They could be Chinese. They could be black. You understand? They could be from Africa. They could be from Earth. But they're Rastafari. There's a lot of Rastafari out there that you don't even know are Rastafari. What they're waiting for, they're growing. But they're waiting for the right time. 
know what I'm saying, to do their part. And they're doing their part now to learn and to grow in the true faith of the King of Kings and his Christ. But anyway, this is just to once again respond to this, this particular point because it's a main point, and we want to put out a couple of things on this, and perhaps if y'all wills go into some more detail on this, once again to reemphasize, you understand, you have two lineages here. You understand? You have the lineage from Jacob and Israel, which is black, and you have the lineage from Esau, you understand, from Esau and the Canaanites, you understand, which is white. You know, was, and the original foundation of the British monarchy actually was the black nobility. But as we see, everywhere where black people have, have managed to achieve something, you understand, white supremacy, this present world system has managed to strip that from them. This is one reason why Ethiopia, of all the other African um, nations, was only able to maintain her sovereignty because of that 3,000 plus year old tradition, culture, history, you know what I'm saying, that's every much as legitimate, you understand, and even more so than the so-called British or the European monarchies or so forth and so on. So please do not confuse um, apples and oranges. They may, may both be fruits in that sense, but one is citrus, one is not citrus. You know what I mean? I mean, remember the, the, the details. They say, that, they say the devil's in the details. But if you even get into the details of these lies about how the British government placed His Majesty Haile Selassie, on, that's, 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 that's all poppycock. That's all a lie. You understand? And in fact, ask them, what is your proof? Present proof. But notice this, people, and we're going to close out on this. Notice how easy it is for you all to believe, those who believe that the British or the Queen of England or somebody else, European white person, put his majesty or, or as, you know, like somehow they have done something for us and nothing was done for them first. Ask them to present some evidence. But isn't it interesting how many of y'all will believe any sort of lie against your own without even the slight hint of evidence? It's like Bob Marley say, like, and, 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 and like they can always reach us. You know, like they know, they know how they can reach us. It's so easy for them to reach us. You know what I'm saying? It's so easy for them to just say anything. And we automatically believe the worst about our own, and we always believe the best about the stranger. That's what you call uh, living in the image of the beast and believing the lie and still being plugged in. You must be unplugged. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Until we um, continue on this point or another point, brothers and sisters, stay tuned. I and I love the I and them. Stay in the faith. Watch and pray. Shalom. Ras Tefari.